Here's a question. Is the multiverse science or pseudoscience? About four or five years ago, when I used to study quantum physics and read interesting books about it, I actually used to believe in the multiverse. I thought that there was another me in a different reality of a universe. However, upon further ex um, inspection and critical thinking, I realized that the multiverse is nothing but a ad hoc pseudoscientific theory that has no real scientific basis whatsoever. So if you were going to ask me the question, the answer will be no. The multiverse is actually a pseudoscience. It is not a science. And I will explain why. There are a lot of famous shows such as the Cosmos and other scientific programs like NOVA, TED, or TED that talk about the multiverse. They treat the multiverse as if it's a scientific fact and it has been shown to exist. However, upon further inspection, you will realize that they are lacking something that science requires, and that is empirical evidence. If you notice and look at those shows, you will realize that they never show any empirical evidence demonstrating the existence of a multiverse. Rather, they only justify the multiverse under uh, speculative conjectures that have no empirical basis whatsoever. Usually, these speculative conjectures fall under the category of two distinct sciences. One is astronomy and the other is quantum physics. However, quantum physics is the most famous one since it supposedly says that the multiverse is real. However, I will first like to address quantum physics before I move on to astrology. I mean, excuse me, astronomy. Okay, so let's get started with quantum physics. Multiverse theorists will usually argue that quantum physics prove or demonstrate the existence of a multiverse. However, there is a serious problem with this assumption. However, before I clarify, I will first like to address the origin of the multiverse and quantum mechanics. The multiverse usually comes from a problem that is found in quantum mechanics. That problem is known as the measurement problem or the collapse of the quantum wave function. Now this may seem really strange, but in quantum mechanics, until something is observed, it does not have a definite existence state. To make this point even more vividly, suppose that an atom is capable of spinning either up or down. According to quantum mechanics, before the atom is observed, the atom will be both up and down at the same time. Yes, as I said before, it's weird, but it's the truth according to quantum mechanics. Now, the problem comes from here. When you observe the atom, the atom either collapses into either up atom or down atom. That is because the observation causes the atom to either be one or the other, but not both. That is because observation collapses the quantum wave function and therefore creates the reality of the atom's definite existence. Now, this is a problem for quantum physicists and physicists alike because if quantum mechanics works, and is governed under the apparatus of observation collapsing the wave function of an object and causing it to to uh, what is it definite existence then what does that say about the reality well basically what quantum mechanics says is that there is no definite reality until it has been observed in other words there is no such thing as an absolute reality rather reality is created by observation now does observation necessarily be cautious cautious this well, I will eventually cover that later. However, for now, let's just accept that observation is uh, what is uh, it's an ultimate factor that creates the reality of the quantum world and basically the ultimate reality of everything. Now, this is a problem for quantum physicists because it leads to the, the, the level of reality being absolutely real and completely objective. So, s scientists do not understand how this exactly happens. So, this is where the multiverse comes in play. The multiverse accepts literally what quantum theory says. The multiverse theory, instead of saying that the atom's wave function has collapsed into one definite state, it actually states that the atom's wave function has actually collapsed into one state and in another universe it has collapsed into another state. For example, the atom's wave qu quantum wave function of it being up or down it has actually been up and down but in different uh, parallel universes. In the multiverse theory, instead of the quantum wave function of the atom collapsing into one definite state, it actually exists in both states at the same time but in different parallel universes. 
the multiverse theory says no to collapse, but rather says that they all exist in different universes. On the contrary though, Copenhagen interpretation says that there is indeed a collapse in the quantum wave function, and therefore the collapse prohibits the existence of the quantum wave function existing at the same time in different parallel universes. In history though, Hugh Everett came up with the multiverse idea in 1957 in order to allow cosmologists to deal with a wave function for the universe. With no need for observers to collapse the wave function, the many worlds in presentation resolves the mystery of observation by the sensible seemingly pl ploy of including um, consciousness as a part of the physical universe described by quantum mechanics. So which is true? Copenhagen interpretation or the multiverse interpretation? While both theories may seem reasonable, there is actually a significant problem with the multiverse. Quantum mechanics does not actually support the possibility of a multiverse. Rather, what quantum mechanics says is that the definite existence is not real until uh, an observer or observation has occurred and caused it to collapse into a definite existence. Definite existence is the key term here. Recall earlier that before an animal was observed, it actually doesn't have any real existence. Rather, it exists in a wave-like probability state known as quantum superposition. Now, to be scientific, in order for something to be scientific, it must be testable and falsifiable. How exactly do you test the multiverse? The problem with using multiverse and quantum mechanics is that it isn't empirically testable. When you observe the atom's uh, state, it only becomes one or the other. However, in quantum mechanics, you cannot observe both of them existing at the same time, and that is a fact that cannot be denied. The fact that you cannot observe the atom being in one state and in another, in the other state at the same time, is pretty much a dead blow to the multiverse because it shows that the evidence for something existing at the same time is non-existent. Yes, it is indeed true that a single atom can be in more than one place at the same time. However, no one has actually observed the atom being at both places at the same time. However, the fact that an atom can be in more than one place at the same time does not necessarily demonstrate the multiverse. However, the problem with arguing that the atom being in more than one place at the same time supports the multiverse is actually flawed. This is because the positions, the, the superposition state of the atom is actually not real. It actually does not have any definite existence. Multiverse theory claims that there is definite existence of the atom being in one form and in the other universe the other. However, in quantum superposition, there is no definite existence. Therefore, it does not really confirm the prediction that the multiverse theory is making. In order for quantum physics to demonstrate the multiverse, it will first have to demonstrate definite existence of the complementary state of the atom coexisting. However, the fact that quantum physics fails to demonstrate such definite existence is pretty much a dead blow to the multiverse because multiverse requires definite existence in order to confirm its prediction. The fact that a single atom can be in two or more places at the same time but without any different existence is a severe death blow once again to the multiverse. Therefore, quantum mechanics does not really support the multiverse. What quantum mechanics really support is Copenhagen interpretation that observation collapses the quantum wave function of the atom and therefore causing only one or the other but not both. As sad as it may sound, Copenhagen interpretation actually holds water for quantum mechanics since it actually makes completely sense. It is the observation that collapses the quantum wave function of an atom, therefore creating only one or the other different uh, state, but not both. Copenhagen interpretation is not supported simply by an interpretation, but it is also supported by empirical evidence since it can be demonstrated empirically that the act of observing the state of an atom can indeed cause it to be one or the other in a definite sense. Therefore, quantum mechanics does not really say that every possibility happens in different universes. Rather, what it says is that only by observing you cause it to be one form or the other, but once again, not both, as the multiverse suggests. Until it can be demonstrated that a single same object can coexist in different states at the same time, the multiverse theory will remain as a pseudoscience. Now let's move on to astronomy. According to astronomers or cosmologists, the fact that there is cosmic inflation proves 
or shows the existence of a multiverse. However, there is a serious problem with this assertion. The problem is that the multiverse within the context is actually not supported by any empirical evidence. It is only supported by a conjecture I like to call an extrapolation. The multiverse actually comes from the imagination of cosmologists. The multiverse is actually, once again, an extrapolation. To put make this point more vivid, suppose I have X, Y, and Z. X is the universe, Y is the inflation. By uh, observing X, the universe, and Y, the, uh, the uh, what is it, the inflation, you will realize that the inflation and the universe coexist. However, an extrapolation will be by looking at X and Y, you conclude that there is C, and that C is the multiverse. Now, the problem with this logic is that it is speculative. The problem with extrapolating is that it is going beyond what the data is actually suggesting. This is usually where exaggerations and hyperbole usually come from when it comes to researchers. A researcher, for example, finds statistical evidence that a cell phone has a little amount of radiation. An extrapolation will be that the researcher concludes that the, that radiation causes cancer. However, the reason why this argument is flawed is because it is going beyond what the data is actually suggesting. The data suggests that there is indeed radiation going on with the cell phone, but it does not in any way or any manner suggest that it causes cancer. The only way to find out for sure is that if you conduct a different experiment that tends to answer that uh, question. Does radiation cause cancer in the cell phone? In order to test that, you first have to do the experiment and then look for and then uh, gather the new data that actually tests that assumption or question. Here's another example. Suppose researchers found statistically significant evidence of chocolate milk increasing fatness in students. Now, why it is indeed true that there is uh, evidence that chocolate milk could increase fatness in students? The question is, is it really practically significant? An extrapolation here would be that chocolate milk causes fatness in students and therefore should be banned be in order to solve the obesity problem. However, the problem with this is that the data does not show just how significant does the fatness in the chocolate milk really is uh, when it comes to students. In other words, it does not really suggest how big is the impact of fatness or obesity? The only way to find out for sure is if you calculate the effect size of the data. Otherwise, you are going to run into a common misconception that is rather commonly exaggerated. Basically, you will need new data information in order to solve the extrapolated uh, issue. Now, this is the same with the multiverse. Cosmologists argue that the multiverse is justified by cosmic inflation. However, the problem with this is that the data does not support the multiverse at all. It only suggests that there is indeed causes of inflation, nothing less, nothing more. Now, even though cosmologists argue that the multiverse is justified by cosmic inflation, notice that when they write it down in their articles, they usually say may or maybe or could be, suggesting as if they're not certain that it really exists. How can they argue that a multiverse exists when they argue as if they're not really sure. That is because they're extrapolating, they are speculating. Now that is the problem with the multiverse. The multiverse is nothing more but a, spec a speculation. A speculation that has no empirical value basis whatsoever and should therefore be treated out of science, despite how some scientists support it. So is the multiverse science or pseudoscience? As I have explained before, the multiverse is not testable and even if it was testable, it has never been done before. And second, it is not falsifiable because there is no way to know whether or not a multiverse really exists. However, the multiverse is something that is rather speculative rather than empirical. The fact that the multi there is no empirical evidence for the multiverse is pretty much a dilemma for the theory. Since there is no empirical evidence for the multiverse, it should be treated out of science. Until someone can show empirical evidence of the multiverse existing, then I will eat my words. However, since the multiverse is not supported by any real scientific experiments, it should be treated once again out of science. Have you ever wondered why no scientist that supports the multiverse has never won the Nobel Prize? Exactly 
because they cannot demonstrate it to be conclusively true. Now, thanks for watching.